What's up YouTube? It's Eric here. How you doing? And uh, today's video is on how to start start up, if you will, a Cessna 152. I am currently training on a Cessna 152 and uh, it makes it very useful on the flight sim as well as using my headphones which I will show you a quick little glimpse of how I do that with my PC. These are my actual real headsets for flying. Uh, cut down on the sound for the wife, able to use the microphone like usual, so it's all good. But uh, we're going to explore how to start with Cessna 152 uh, using a, a ch standard checklist, basically. Um, first step is just to get a checklist. So if you go online and just search up Cessna 152 checklist, a bunch will pop up. I like to use my tablet for the actual checklist. I don't know if you can see that. Probably can't, but... It's all right here. Uh, it just has a standard checklist, pre-flight and everything, so that you can uh, check out what you need to do. And uh, yeah, without further ado, um, we'll go to the video. All right, welcome YouTubers. Uh, this is Eric of Eric Flight, and uh, we're going to demonstrate how to start up a Cessna 152 from the checklist. I'm going to try to leave a link in the description to the checklist I use, but um, pretty much we'll do it just like a real Cessna 152. This is the uh, Coronado Cessna 152. It's a great plane. Uh, it doesn't look exactly like the Cessna 152 I fly, but it has everything that is basically in a 152. It's kind of cool. You can open up the ashtrays. You can open up the doors. You can open up windows. So it is... Uh, pretty realistic model here and uh, has everything you need to fly with so uh, we are currently at Plymouth Municipal Airport in Plymouth Massachusetts that's where I fly out of and the scenery that you see in front of you is uh, Orb X uh, they have a North American Airport series that's free so anyways we're gonna go right through this checklist uh, I'm gonna try to have a uh, I'm gonna go right down the checklist. We're gonna we're gonna see what we have to do. Uh, the first thing when you walk in the plane is even before you walk in the plane, while you're walking towards the plane in real life, you just want to take a general look at the plane, make sure it's in good condition, uh, look for anything that looks suspicious as you're walking towards the plane. Uh, we're not gonna do all the pre-flight checks because that would require being out of the plane, checking the fuel for. Uh, water, checking your oil, etc, etc. Uh, I hope to do that in person someday uh, when I have enough time in my lessons. Uh, lessons are expensive, so I'm not going to do it unless I have time. But um, we'll do the best we can with the simulator. So, let me take that frame rate off there. It's pretty bad, but I'm using a laptop for this. So the first thing you got to check in the plane is you have to check for your airworthiness, your registration, the operator's manual, and the weight and balances. And that should be in some type of uh, binder, if you will, kind of book type deal. Uh, I know usually in my flight school, it's found in the back of the seat over here. So it'd be like a pocket right over here, and you can grab it out of there. But you want to check that, and you want to check the dates on it, make sure it's not expired or anything like that. Uh, the next step is usually right here there'd be what we call a control lock and that makes it so that you can't go in and out with your yoke um, but pretty much again FSX doesn't have the control yoke on here uh, just I mean the control wheel lock excuse me so we're just gonna pretend that it's there okay uh, looking next on our checklist the checklist I use at least we have to check to make sure the ignition switch is off and again, on a flight simulator, this is a little tougher because you're just not in the plane. So if you push the yoke in, it's right there. It's definitely, oh, it wasn't off. See, good thing I checked that. I don't know why it was like that. But uh, it's supposed to be off. The master switch, we're going to turn on next. This is all in the checklist. We're just going in the order. So the master switch goes on. You can hear the gyro start turning on. And the fuel gauges, you want to check the quantity. However, in your pre-flight, which would be done after this, you would visually check how much fuel is in the wing. But right now, we have... I don't know if it's going to show it. Probably not. 
But we have a little over half a tank, so we're doing okay. All right. Uh, next, we're going to put the flaps down to 30 degrees. And our master switch is going to go off. But before you do that, you want to visually check to make sure the flaps are going down. Because if they're not, you would have a problem before you step out and do your pre-flight. After that, you want to turn off your master battery. An alternator there. Turn it off. And the fuel shutter valve has to be on. There's actually a little plastic tab right here in the Cessna 152 I fly, probably all the others too. But on means that it's horizontal, off means that it's vertical. And uh, you can't see it in this model, but it's it'd be right here. There'd be a little plastic tab to turn the fuel on and off. And obviously you want it on so that the fuel goes in the plane. All right. So, once you do that, the next thing would be to do your pre-flight check of the plane on the outside, which again, we can't really check. But one thing you did want to check too, that I didn't want to do as part of that, is you also want to check your lights. You don't want to keep this master on for too long, because nothing's charging the battery right now. But just to check the lights in Flight Simulator, put your nav on, your beacon, and your landing. And then you're going to go in Spot View, you just got to make sure that those lights are working. So if you see, I got my uh, nav lights. Got the right. I got my landing light right there in front. That's on. I got my other nav light. It's green, looking good. And the beacon should be flashing, which it is if you see the red flashing right here. Uh, just not showing up here, but you can see the beacon's on. So we're going to go back inside the plane. We're going to turn our master off. We'll also turn our lights back off just to make sure they're off. And again, after you check the lights and everything on the inside, you go on the outside and continue with the checklist. Um, again, I'll try to do that for you someday when uh, my lesson time allows. All right. After that, next thing on our checklist is your pre-flight inspections completed, which it would be. That's on the outside, checking fuel, checking oil, stuff like that, checking the condition of the plane. Passenger briefing, you tell people how to take uh, to latch and unlatch your seatbelts, uh, that you can kick out the front windshield, etc., etc. Seatbelts, you make sure they're adjusted to fasten. Brakes, test and set. In the simulator, we, I have a pair of rudder pedals, by the way. That's why you see differential brakes. But I'm just pushing on the brakes, making sure that they're working. So it looks good. My avionics are off. That's this button right here, by the way, on our Cessna. Circuit breakers, which are these circle things right here. We will check to make sure those are basically in. I know on my Cessna 152 that I fly, uh, it actually has a circuit breaker that goes the other way. It pulls out or in. Pulls out, thank you. And uh, this one does not have, but this is what the circuit breakers would be. And that's what you want to check to make sure that they're all in. Okay. And again, the fuel shutter valve is on. And that is the part of the checklist that is before starting the engine. So, we're almost into our final step here. Uh, starting the engine, I'm going to use my uh, throttle control here, but watch the red knob here. This is your mixture knob. You want that to be all the way in. That's what they mean by mixture rich. Okay. Carb heat. Carb heat is right here. Carburetor heat. They want that to be cold. If it's all the way in, it is cold. If you push it out, it would be hot. But, again, the checklist says they want it to be cold. They say to turn your master switch on. So we're going to go back to the master switch over here. I'm going to turn that on. And next step on our checklist for starting engine is to turn your beacon of strobes on. You always want your beacons on before you start the plane because the beacon means that your engine is running, basically. It signifies that to people. All right, the key is in the ignition which it is, it always is on this thing. Uh, they want to open up the throttle. The throttle is this black switch right here. We're gonna open up a fourth of an inch, about that much, all right. Brakes, you gotta make sure that they're on, so you have both feet on the red pedals pushing down on the brakes. Priming the engine. It all depends on when the aircraft was last run. Uh, at my flight school, we often don't prime it because it was used by a student right before me. But if you are going to prime, it's down here on your left, right where my hand is, right there. 
And we're going to do three primes. One, two, three. Now, in real life, this has actually a, a latch that locks in there. In real life, you'd want to make sure that that's latched and locked in there. She'd give it a little tug after you push it in the, the latch. Because if it's uh, not, it can cause uh, problems for you. Let's just say that. All right. The next step you would do, just before you're about to start the plane, is you'd open up the window to get people's attention. And you'd say, clear prop. And that means that you're about to start up the engine. Just warns people on the outside. And we're going to go to the ignition switch all the way to start. And the plane is started. So, we have our engine on. We're now looking at things uh, after we start. They want you to go to at least a thousand or below. So we're gonna back off on the throttle a little bit. All right, idle, 1,000 RPM or below. Oil pressure, which is down here. It's hard to see in this, but it's right here. You wanna make sure that's rising and it has risen. So we're doing good there. The amp meter does not work on this thing, but if you hover over, sometimes, at least on the flight simulator 2004 version, it shows you if it's uh, using the battery or not. But in real life, this needle would be going all over the place a little bit, especially in the Cessna 152 I fly, because the amp meter is not exactly fully functional all the time. Just an old plane. All right, next step in our checklist is flaps up. That's this switch here. Flaps are all the way up. Again, you want to visually check to make sure that the flaps are going up, which they are. Always visually check that because it is a electric system for the flaps, and if it's not working, it's not working. And radios are on. Okay. My radios are on. Um, there seems to be a bug with this, by the way, just to let you know, uh, this does not turn on the radio. On the Flight Simulator 2004 version, it would, so I just push Control e after I start the engine to get that going. And what we're going to do next is we're going to set the transponder uh, to standby. Now this says 1200 because as most people probably know, but if you don't, uh, you set your transponder to 1200 because that means you're in visual flight rules. And what you're gonna do one last time before we taxi up to what we call the run-up area. So we're just gonna test our brakes. So we're gonna take our, our feet off the brakes. We're gonna do the throttle just a little bit. And we're gonna hit the brakes to make sure it stops, which it did. So we know our brakes are fully functional. If you had a flight instructor to your right over here, they would also test their brakes just to make sure they're working. And now we're going to listen to the ATIS to see what the. Oh, that's Unicom, sorry. We're going to listen to the ATIS so that way we know One, seven, what we're going to take off on. that they gave us the altimeter, it's a good idea to do that now. So they said 2986, that way our altitude is good. Uh, if you want it less realistic than that, you can push B and D, and that will select your directional beacon, which is right here. It says a little bit past 6, so it's looking good. And then the altitude will just set itself with the altitude uh, quick button. Fix. All right, so with that, we're going to switch to Unicom. Unicom for Plymouth is 123.00. And what we would do is we'd say uh, what runway we're going to. It says 276 or where the winds are coming from. So I believe I would go to runway 24. So we're going to taxi to runway 24. You'd announce that. Uh, you say November 6828 Kilo, uh, taxiing to runway 24 at Plymouth. And 
here we go. Again, sorry about the frame rate. I actually usually fly Flight Simulator 2004. You want to always be looking for traffic, by the way. But FSX obviously has the better visuals. And runway two for us right down this taxiway. So here we go. Uh, for taxiing, I've been told that you want it to be at the speed of like a, a jogging, basically. So, uh, it doesn't help my frame rate's a little low here, but I'm gonna go with it anyways. Looking pretty good. And your goal is to try to keep it up in the middle of the yellow line. I know a little bit off there. And we're gonna slow down just a little bit, because there's a runway coming up. Okay. Always looking for traffic, by the way. In real life, uh, airports can be slow and busy at different times. That is a stop line. Um, in real life, you're just going to give a really good look on both sides. And as soon as you know you're clear, you might even announce the air traffic uh, to the Unicom that you are, are crossing runway 15 for 24. Gonna cross. Now in real life, and I think Orb X has done this. I know in uh, Flight Simulator 2004, it doesn't have a run-up area. Going a little too fast. This one actually does have a run up area. This is place on the left here. That's where you're gonna go with your plane. And we're gonna just do a little bit of a 180 here, turning into that area. Because that's where we have to do our run up in order to finish our checklist and our checking of the plane. So the first thing you wanna do is head over here and just break the plane. You know, just stay right there. You want to make sure that when your propeller is washed, that there's no one behind you. I could probably even go a little bit further so it's on the grass, but we're good. You just want to make sure that the, the uh, prop wash is not affecting anybody. And then we go to our run-up checklist, which is part of the ultimate checklist. All right, and it says, run-up before takeoff. The cabin door is closed and latched which they are. You might even give it a little elbow just to make sure that's really locked. These things are notorious for having the doors open once in a great while. Flight co control is free and correct. In real life, you would do a box movement. So you'd go forward to the right, back to the left, and then back to forward, and then just let it be there. And you'd be looking out the windows while you're doing that. But seeing that I have this on one monitor, on a flight simulator, you have to do something a little different. You're going to look to your right, and you're just going to turn to the right and make sure the aileron moves. Okay? You want to make sure the other aileron moves. Looks good. Then you go to the left. That one went up, and the other one should be down, which it is. So we're looking good. And in the back here, we'll push down. The elevator should go uh, down. Push back. It should go up. And that's how you check your flight controls with the flight simulator. Because it's a little tougher than just checking your head while you're touching stuff. Alright, elevator trim. Just gotta be set to take off next. So, it's a little hard to see a takeoff thing unless you got that. It actually looks pretty good. So, we're looking for this thing. This is your trim. You wanna make sure it says takeoff. That looks awesome. And flight instruments, check and set. Again, there's a bug with this Carinata 152. You see this red flag right here? That should not be on and would not be on in real life because that means that this thing's not functioning. Uh, it actually is functioning. They just have a bug where it didn't get rid of the flag. You also want to check that your airspeed is good and not all over the place at the moment. The horizon is pretty good. The altitude should be 
uh, about 150-ish at Plymouth, so we're looking good there. There's no flags or nothing here. The all direction finders looking good. I mean, I don't even think I have it on. Oh, I have it on now. But uh, NDBs, non-directional beacons, most people don't use anymore. They even got rid of it on the FAA exam now. You want to make sure your vertical speed's working. So we're looking good. And we're just about done with our run-up. What we have to do now is set our brakes. So I have my feet on the rudder pedals. I'm gonna make the throttle go up to 1700 RPM. RPM's over here. If you didn't know, you want to go up to 1700, right about there. We're looking good. Uh, you'll notice that the plane is inching forward. In real life, it would not be inching forward when you have full brakes on. All right, you gotta check your magnetos. So check the magnetos, which are right and left. You got your ignition switch. You're gonna go two to the. You gotta do two minuses basically. And that's gonna check your right magneto. If it's working, you should see this RPM go down basically. So one, two. Did it go down? Yes, it did. Just a little bit. So I'm gonna go back to both now. I'm gonna go twice to the right. One, two. Should go back up just slightly. Then we'll go to my left. Now left is right in the middle, so just one minus. Went down just a hair. Back to both. And that looks good because you should dip down when you do the right. Go back to both, goes back up. Go to the left, you should dip down again. Go back to both and it goes up again. The uh, next step is to test our carburetor heat. You know that's working because the RPM should go down when it's on. That means that you pull it out. And you notice that the RPM just slightly goes down. So we know our carb heat is working good. So I'm going to pop it back in. You'll see the RPMs go back up. The amp meter is over here. Again, you would check that in a real plane. You make sure that's charging uh, on this Coronado Cessna 152. You can't tell right here. And the suction gauge filing, which is right here. You want to make sure that's in the green. That's for your flight instruments. And we're looking good. We're going to go with idle on throttle now. I like to keep it around a thousand so that way the engine doesn't run rough and the next thing on your checklist would be the throttle friction lock what that is you see this little circle right here if you're in a real plane that controls how much force it takes to put the throttle in and out so you do adjust that to your liking to make sure that it looks good lights as required when we're flying even at day it's a good idea to put the landing lights on uh, sometimes it's very hard to see a plane from distance and the landing lights helps. And radios are set. We're set to the Unicom for Plymouth at 123.00. Transponder has to be set to altitude. So we're going to go two switches, uh, two pluses over to altitude. You notice that you have a red light, which means that your transponder is working. And the last thing is just to double check to make sure that your mixture is rich. Excuse me. And that's it. Uh, other than that, you would want to know some things before you take off, such as uh, rotation, what speed you want to rotate at. Uh, for the Cessna 152, it's around 50. And uh, you just make sure that you clear over here. You taxi to the runway that you want. And then you uh, prepare to take off. So that is my video on how to basically start up it says the 152 according to the checklist I uh, hope this helps it makes it more realistic I know when I first started doing flight simming uh, I didn't do half this stuff I knew they were checklists but honestly the checklists that come with the default aircraft or the flight simulator are very basic at best so if you want realism you, you should go download a Cessna 152 checklist from a flight school, uh, just know um, that they're not used for real world uh, flying unless, I mean, you should use the one from your flight school, or if you're renting a plane, use one that the uh, the rental company or person has in their possession. Um, yeah, so that's how you start a Cessna 152 and get ready for takeoff uh, as close as possible to real life. And I hope you enjoy this video. Again, I hope it helps. Alright, bye.